we are very lucky to have Elijah Massenberg on the show today. And Elijah is an extraordinary young man, not just because he played sports, because everyone knows I love to surround myself with great uh, competitors or athletes, but uh, because he's a good person. That's the most important thing. Uh, he has uh, great parents, and um, he's been an incredible energy to the team. But he's also a great student, and we're going to get into some of that stuff later. But I just want you to get into your uh, background and, and tell everyone you know, about your kind of path and what you're open to sharing, and then we'll work into the uh, you know sports training and then your program. So thanks for being on the show, Elijah. Of course. Um, so my name's Elijah. I'm from New York. I was born in Manhattan. Lenox Hill Hospital is the name of the, uh, the name of the place I was born. And when I was about six years old, I moved on here with my mother to Miami. And I've been here ever since then. Went to South Point Elementary, North Beach in fifth grade, Knowledge Middle School, and now I'm graduating at Miami Beach Junior High School. So I'm very lucky to um, have been in the same public school system for 12 years of my life. And I'll, I'll, um, I also share the same friends I've had since maybe kindergarten. So very lucky and very blessed to have that. Awesome. Yeah, I said you, you have a, an awesome family. You have a twin sister, right? Yes, I have a twin sister. Her name's Eliana. She's brilliant as well. She wants to major in psychology when she goes to college. So she's pretty cool, too. That's awesome. And we met her at the basketball game. But very nice person as well. At what age did you start playing sports? And why did you start playing sports? I always, I think... I don't remember a specific age, but I do remember like playing soccer after school and then this program back in my uh, hometown. But as I got older, <laughs> the main reason I started playing sports was because I was a high energy kid. Um, and I used to always do stupid things, like throw erasers or like, let's do things just because I have all this free time on my hands. So my mom made sure to put me in sports to keep me out of trouble. Okay. Yeah. That's good. All right, so mom put you in sports, and she put you in all sports? Yeah, because I loved any sport. Anything that had to do with competition, I loved. Mm -hmm. And as I got older, I obviously gravitated towards basketball, but I used to play all sports. So what sports did you start playing? I mean, did you play all sports? And I know you, you settled on one, but kind of talk about what you played, why, and then why you chose that one. Soccer was a big um, sport of mine. I love soccer. I remember growing up, I used to want to be goalkeeper and striker. I used to, um, in my house here in Miami, I used to actually stack pillows up against like a table against a wall. And I used to like do target practice. So I would stack pillows up and I'll put one like faced up. And that's how I used to, that's how I used to practice kicking. Um, and my mom, I, my mom was pretty cool about it because you could hear just the banging of the ball against the side of the house. I remember I tried football out because my best friend um, is a QB now. He plays football, and I tried it out. I wasn't the biggest fan, but I had fun. And basketball was always a thing. My father put a basketball hoop in the back of my house, or back of his house, and he always taught me how to shoot on it, and it was, like, something that we used to do often to bond. And he, we used to actually sneak into, like, my South Point Elementary School um, during the weekends so we could practice shooting hoops on, like, the small rims. Okay, okay. Any favorite players growing up? All-time favorite player? Um... For soccer, I love Messi. Okay. That's the reason why we're number 10 on the basketball court. Okay. Always, always enjoy him because he was very small, but very dominant. Hmm, I'm trying to think. Who else? I love Manuel Neuer. He okay. was um, one of the best goalkeepers in the world. He played for Germany. Mm -hmm. I used to always, yeah, because right in the era, 2014 World Cup, I remember I used to like, this, I would have like every single home. Um, player who else what about basketball oh basketball so my my admiration for players depends like shifts from time to time i'm about to say right now my favorite player to watch might be darius garland okay. from the cleveland cavaliers he's very crafty very cool very good player but all time honestly I don't have an all time. I just have a couple guys I really like. Okay. Like I love, I love Steph Curry because just the way that he 
shifted the game of basketball but also he never stops moving right. like, if you watch him play he's constantly on the move trying to just and also he's very unselfish in my opinion i feel like he doesn't um obviously sometimes he has to take tough shots i feel like at the end of the day um he's just happy with the team right and also jimmy butler but i love jimmy jimmy is definitely going to be one of my favorite players because he's just a team player like, I remember one time I was watching him or listening to his interview and he was talking about um, he doesn't care if he has zero points or 20 points as long as the team wins. So everyone knows that you train. You train with uh, Brandon every morning now in, in the off season, And Brandon's an amazing person and a great coach. Um, talk a little bit about that experience and, and, and why you started doing that and why you continue to do that. And, uh, you know, what you like about it. Um, why- Brandon, <laughs> I love that guy. I'll never say it to his face, but I love him. Uh-huh. Brandon, so I joined Anatomy in about almost a year ago. Mm-hmm. And I was on the main floor. I believe I was cleaning up weights. And me and Brandon, I met Brandon maybe the first time because I had to help him set up for a Saturday morning class. So I already knew who he was a little bit. And... We were talking and he asked me if I worked out at the gym yet. And I'm like, no, I, I work out on my own. Back at home, I finished at 530. And for those who do know Brandon, Brandon loves talking a little bit of um, game. So he was like, oh, at 530, I finished my workouts. And I was like, huh, like what time do you wake up? He's like, oh, we're here at 430. So that was on a Saturday. And I remember that following Monday, I showed up and it has been history ever since. I love the 4 a.m. workouts. Um, or waking up at four in the morning, even though I could work out at any time during the day, I think the most important thing that I could take from it is just discipline. Having to like hear your alarm go off and having to wake up is a battle every day, regardless of what time you're waking up. And I take big pride in waking up early because I know I, I did one thing for today for myself and this becomes a habit. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any specific lessons? you learn you've learned from training because you, you didn't start training at 4 a.m to you know you came over and you with the team but like that's very unique there's not a lot of kids who do that little ryan does it i know that you do it so that's very unique and it's not easy for everyone to do it you have to want to do it but what can you say what's been developing in your in the psychology of discipline for you so your high school coach made you come in at 7 a.m.? Oh, he didn't make us. So he was like, hey, he was very nice about it. Because um, this is AAU basketball, not high school basketball yet. And he okay. used to host training sessions in okay. the morning between 7.15 to 9 before school, because school started at 9.10. And my friend Cole, who's still one of my closest friends to this day, one day he offered to take me one day. So I was like, okay, like I'll do it. And then there was a kid there named Izzy, who's a year younger than me, who's also probably one of the best basketball players I've ever played with. I find out he's my neighbor. And he basically is like, hey, like, give me your mom's number and I'll have my dad call her and we can see if we could take, pick you up every day. And after that, I started training every day before school. And at some point, I used to wake up at five and get like maybe 700 shots up and then go work out. 700 shots? How long does that yeah. take? It depends. Because like, I th- thank, God, thank God I have the ball machine. So put three basketballs in there and you can basically shoot 700 nonstop in maybe an hour. Oh, wow. 45 minutes. Yeah. Right. And yeah, so then that ha- and that basically jump started like me waking up before school and doing a workout. And then freshman year, did the same thing. Sophomore year as well. I actually used to bike to um, the JCC over the Venetian Bridge to get to like the training and stuff. Yeah, and then la- this year as well, and last year. Awesome. So what would you say to, do you play with some kids who, and it's not about good or bad, but you know, some kids really want to be there, some kids don't want to be there. What advice would you give to high schoolers or you know, kids you know, coming up and how they approach and how they work. You don't have to like, you know, you can play high school sports and not want to play in the NBA. Most certainly because most won't, right? Even most right. won't even play college. 
What advice would you give to those kids in regards to having an optimal experience? So for me, the biggest thing I would say is just understanding, understanding, enjoying the journey, right? There's, there's this book that you gave me when, when I first started working. It's called Chop Wood, Carry Water. Okay. That book is, I think that book is a really great read for anybody regardless of age. And I think it's really important that kids, high school kids especially, even if they don't want to play college basketball or high school or, or um, NBA, what I always used to tell myself is regardless if I get to any of those levels, I want to be able to look back and say I have no regrets. I mean, I should have trained. I, 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 so I don't have to say like, oh, I should have trained more this day or I should have trained more. I should have done this better. Um, so I would just say, just like, just making sure you you get better every day. Whether it's small, small one percent, small things, just make just make sure your goal is just to get better. And it comes in with work. Like you could still you could be training twice a day, and things can still be going bad. But being able to keep training twice a day because the time is just around the corner. You just have to you're just building up to it. What's happened to me? Last year during my junior basketball season where I started off rocky, but even though I was starting off rocky, I kept on working out. I even made my pregame workouts harder. My friend Charlie and Chris, um, Chris was injured, Charlie was injured, but they would work me out after school. So one of them would be rebounding, one of them would be defending me, and we'll get like 400 so 400 something makes in before a game, all game stuff. And yeah, even, even though I was, I was playing bad, I kept on working and I ended up having a great second half season. Your, your, it's your, a lot of your habits, Elijah, all through growing up with the shooting, with the training, with the lifting that, and I think it's very interesting to see, you know, when I went, went to one of your games and just to see, I feel like no matter what happens with someone, if they put that sort of time in, that sort of commitment, that sort of training in, the worst case scenario is they de they develop, excuse me, they develop some sort of discipline. Are you still learning great things from yeah. training? And uh, you certainly have, and you were really hard, and you're you're really strong. I saw you trap bar deadlift, what three eighty five? Um, yeah, you definitely seen me do a couple. Of 400 yeah. maybe one time 400 for sure and um it's a lot of certainly a lot of fun and it's always something special about spending when you spend that much time around people it's just uh it's a nice exchange of energy and it's a good place to be to be they say you are who you surround yourself with so you know you're surrounding yourself with some really great people and brandon and the other body architects yes i agree yeah, so let's talk about your program now. You're a pretty good student? Yeah, pretty where good. Are you, where are you going to school? I'm going to school at uh, Columbia University in the city of New York. Columbia, congratulations. Thank you. Did you always want to go to Columbia? Um, no, actually. <laughs> My top school go? when I was a freshman was Princeton. I always wanted to go to an Ivy League. But okay. Princeton was my long-term um, goal. When I remember I was a freshman, I was like, okay, that's where I want to go. And then time gets closer, things change. And I looked at what's the best place for me, because I do not want to be in the middle of nowhere. I want to be amongst brilliant individuals, but I also want to be in somewhere where I'm in like a vibrant type of city. So I knew Princeton wasn't the school because of the location. So I chose, I broke down my top eight were the eight Ivy Leagues. And a couple mm -hmm. other ones, but my top eight were all the Ivy Leagues, and I broke it down to three. So I was between Harvard, U Penn, and Columbia. And then when it came down to all those factors, I ended up choosing Columbia to do an early decision application to. And thank God, I got very lucky and very fortunate that I got in. Sounds simple, but it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. It was a lot of work. Um, a lot of essay writing, a lot of revision. I think a lot, a couple of people at Anatomy proofread my stuff. Brandon proofread it, Isaac proofread it. Um, everybody had a role into making sure my application writing was A-OK. -okay. Even some members got to read it and give me feedback on it. So it was a great, I loved it. I loved the whole journey of 
um, grinding out that entire application. So it was really a fun time in my life, and it helped me like understand how much fun writing can be. Yeah. Writing can be fun. It can also be really hard. Uh, Stephen King has a book called On Writing, where he talks about the hardships that he had trying to sit down and write because it was so hard for him. Once he sat down and, and it flowed, it was easy. But right. sitting down to actually do it, that's the hard part. Um, mm. So any, you know, maybe a couple lessons that you picked up from uh, being surrounded by the team there at Anatomy? Oh, yeah, a bunch. Most recent one is actually from James, the um, head body architect. Yeah. I was actually reading his TED Talk script. Okay. And one of the biggest things that stood out to me was when he said, are you not sure about what decision to make? Act like you're a friend giving advice. And when I thought about that, I was good one advice. of the, yeah. Good advice. Yeah. <laughs> I remember reading it, I was like, I'm gonna keep that one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, what else? Isaac as well. Isaac taught me a lot of different things. Isaac? Yes. Isaac is one of the most brilliant people I've met at my time at Anatomy. He taught me a lot about things like learning how to listen, like really listening, not just staying quiet and letting the person talk, but just really listening to what they have to say. Mm -hmm. And also, um, who else? You as well. Like seeing very few, <laughs> seeing you, um, your objective is to really kill yourself every morning on the row machine or the ski machine. Um, <laughs> I don't know how you do it. Sometimes I'll be coming in puffy eyed at four thirty, and I just see you cranking it out. It's a really amazing thing to see. Um. Lots of lessons. I mean, I learned some less, a lot of lessons from the team every day. So it's a great place to be. Um, super fortunate to be surrounded by good people. Let's right. talk about your program. You decided to start a program, uh, a financial literacy program. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Let's go. Tell us why. Tell us why. Do the adjustment again, and then tell us why. Okay. So my my financial literacy program is called Finance Ed. It was started in my junior year of high school alongside one of my good friends, Max. So we started it. Honestly, it was started on accident. So what we, me and Max intended to do was go, to, we went, went to our school and we asked if we could start an investment club and they kindly shot it down. So I remember we were walking out and I was like, you know what, we're going to start our own nonprofit and we'll do, we'll see where it goes from there. And little by little, it started off as just us making PowerPoints. And then we got into schools to speak to children about it. And we basically now have an entire educational program where regardless of where you are in the United States, you can download the PowerPoint and download the worksheets that we created and essentially teach your class everything on our website. Okay. So do you feel like there's a huge void with certain people and building like bad, bad habits. That's why you start the program because there's a huge right. void of education and knowledge. But what, what is like, you know, what are some of the things you see with young people in regards to how they handle money or I guess how they maybe value money or mm -hmm. behavior? So I think social media, especially with the younger kids, has a big, big um, influence on it. My mom kept me off social media until I was about 16 years old. So I'm a product of that. But yeah, I can see how social media can um, ingrain certain things in people's minds, especially with a lot of the influencers who try to push um, financial advice that's not necessarily super realistic, mm -hmm. especially with real estate, for example. They make it seem like um, flipping houses or doing Airbnbs and stuff like that. It's, it's like super easy money when realistically it's not. Um, yeah, a lot, of the, a lot of the kids, especially the, when they first started, they didn't really um, understand the value of a dollar. And that's something my mom always used to tell me. Like, you have to learn the value of a dollar. And obviously when you're a kid, you think, oh, like, I, don't, I know what that means, but you truthfully don't know until you get to a certain age or you need to do certain things. So uh, I think the first step for any kid is understanding the real value of a dollar. 
Understood. And have you had a lot uh, as the community or, or the, the, who are you trying to reach out to? Those kids of that age group, that demographic, have they been receptive to all the knowledge you're putting out there? Yeah, they love it. I'm very um, involved with the kids outside of there. And I hear a lot from the parents about how the kids will come home. Like, oh, Elijah came to class today, and they'll be very excited. It makes me really happy because I always wanted to impact in my community, but I wanted to do it in a different way. It's not like setting up basketball camps or doing stuff like that. I wanted to do it in my own way where I also got to learn as we went on. So that doing that financial literacy thing was like perfect for me. Cause I, okay. love, I, I love everything about the finance industry and just being able to apply a small sector of it to the youth is really cool to me. Is there a number one question you get or a number one interest you get? You mentioned like flipping houses and, and, and make it seem like it's super uh, nice. Or what else? What else? What's what's very common? A question or a, a who the kids? Who the kids ask the most? Yeah. Hmm. They actually they ask a lot about like stocks and stuff. Stocks. And, yeah, and what do you tell them? Cryptocurrency and stuff like that. So I never give financial advice. I never tell the kids, "Oh, you should do this. You should do that." But if they have a question in regards to what happened with this, what happened with that. I'm able to answer it. Like a good example would be the FTX situation where FTX lost. Yeah, what, happened there? what happened there? What happened there? Essentially, um, Binance was this company who they owned a certain FTX share. And from what I remember, I'm, I'm going based off pure memory. Mm-hmm. There was a it was a middle Mac, there was a there was a company that basically called caught FTX in fraud. So Binance sold the all their shares of the FTX crypto, forgot the name of it, and that depleted the stock, uh, the the price of the crypto. So that completely depleted the value of FTX. So with that, I actually made an Instagram post about it. I explained to the kids in person about like the points of transparency, mm-hmm. because transparency is everything, whether it's in the business or a relationship or. And even in the classroom, being transparent with your teacher about, oh, if you missed homework or anything like that. Transparency is everything. Here's another powerful takeaway. All right, so we discussed this before uh, when we talked earlier. Do you have your list of five things? Yeah. For the most right. uh, so you- financially or non-financially? You have both? Yeah, I could do both. All right, let's do both. Let's start with non-financial. All right, so... <laughs> The first thing, first takeaway will be understanding and and like harnessing the power of discipline. Mm-hmm. I think discipline could take you places that you didn't think you could go. Okay. Like somebody told me a couple of years ago that I'll be waking up at four in the morning, no, not no issue, but seamlessly. I would be kind of like, okay, maybe, but discipline is definitely um, the number one thing. Two is understanding how to speak to people and knowing how to speak to people mm-hmm. at my job at anatomy i'm constantly interacting with people every day and learning how to network knowing learning how to um put yourself out there and having the confidence to go up to somebody and say, hey my name's elijah nice to meet you i think that's very important three would be allowing your work ethic to translate in other aspects of your life okay. so wow. work ethic for me um, translate in every aspect of my life when it comes to being a student I make sure I do the best I can as well as being captain of my um, basketball team this year I made sure to be the best leader I could be so that's definitely the third one the fourth one is um, smiling more I think energy is a really a big thing and I believe that you can make a really big difference by having a smile on your face and energy is really everything and five, which is something that um, I learned throughout high school, is understanding and knowing who you have around you and how those people affect you. Because ultimately, the people who are surrounded by you every day is who you, is the trajectory you start heading. And sometimes if you're surrounded in a bad friend group, it's sometimes best to take a step back and then let them do what they have to do and you just focus on yourself. I've had to do that, and um, I think it's really important to understand when, when to under, to notice where you're headed, 
and that you don't want to be headed that way and be able to be like, okay, this is not the way for me. Let me go back the other way. Okay. That's a good list. Nice job. So now we're going to go to the financial list. Okay. So no way I have my pen. I'm ready. So the first thing we already covered it, but learning the value of a dollar, I think that's super, super important. That's probably step one. It's learning the value of a dollar, understanding that money doesn't grow in trees, that some shape way or form, you have to learn, you have to understand how to make your own money. Yeah. Second thing is always have an emergency fund. Things happen unexpectedly. So I think it's very important to have some money set aside for certain things. Like for example, um, my tire got slashed about three weeks ago and thank God I had some saving money and I was able to get it fixed. Um, the third thing definitely be learn how to efficiently budget your lifestyle. Um, a big, a big popular rule would be the 50, 30, 20, but the 50, 30, 20 rule is not applicable to everybody's lifestyle. Some people have to spend more than 50% on rent of their income. So when I say efficient budget, I mean, what, whatever works for you, stick to it. So are you going rent, food, entertainment? So yes, yeah, basically 50, 30, 20 is 50% needs, 30% wants. Just me? 50 is rent, yes? Yeah, 50% 50 is like needs, so rent. Need, okay. Um, 30% is wants, things that you okay. want that you don't need, and then 20% is goes straight to your savings. That's the basic thing that we teach the kids okay. there. But we, we also explain how that's not the case for everybody, how everybody can maybe save more or save less. Got it. That's great. What's number four? Read books. Okay. <laughs> there is, there's a lot of good books out there that I've read. Rich Dad Poor Dad is probably the classic. Everybody loves that book that has read it. The Richest Man in Babylon. Mm -hmm. Also a really good book that I read recently. That's another good book. Did you read The Psychology of Money? Yes, actually. You mm -hmm. recommended me that after um, after I finished reading Chop Wood, Carry Water. Mm -hmm. I also, another great book is 48 Laws of Power. Robert Greene. Yes, very, very, very strong book. Yeah. Um, what else? And Legacy. Oh, yeah. With the Irish Blacks. Okay. That's, that's a very good book. And it, it actually helped me understand why anatomy is the way it is. Nice. And so that, that was four. You have five left, right? Yeah, five. Yes. And <laughs> the fifth and most important one is to follow Finance Miami on Instagram. Okay. So that's, the, that's my nonprofit. That's what we do a lot of things there in addition to like the educational parts. We also do podcasts where I interview people who do certain things in the industry of finance, whether it'll be real estate or it would be crypto, private equity, or even we had Acon's, um, Acon Lighting Africa CEO who powers 250 million homes okay. in Africa. We even had him as a guest and we talked about mm -hmm. the points of discipline amongst those things. But also in addition to that, to find that said, is besides financial literacy, is also there's also a leadership program there okay. where we teach the kids other things they might need to know. Like one, one lesson, we taught the kids about the importance of making a good first impression. And we had the kids partner up and practice shaking each other's hands and introducing themselves properly and understanding how to manage your emotions at work. Luckily, I've never had this, but bosses sometimes scream at employees. You've never done it. Um, <laughs> but understanding that you can't scream back at your boss, how to manage your emotions in, the, in an environment like that, yeah. or um, how to create a resume. Very um, simple things that I feel like are overlooked, especially understanding how to manage your emotions in the workplace environment, very overlooked in my opinion. Oh, because you're there all day, right? You spend more yeah. time probably at the workplace than you do at home. Yeah, I love it there. Even on the days I'm not working, I'm there. Yeah. It's so, a good environment to be. Listen, uh, we're very fortunate once again to have you on the team. Those are two great, great lists. I can't thank you enough for being on and uh, educating us. So tell us, uh, you you know, what, what to follow. Go over the Instagram again and uh, anything you want to plug. Now's the time. Um, it's just to follow me on Instagram if you want to see what I'm doing in life. My Instagram is Elijah.Massenberg. 
I keep my Instagram pretty professional and I try to um, post about the things I do. Okay. So if you want to see the next time, actually on March 8th, the kids are going to, so I had the kids create their own LLC as a project and March 8th is pitch day. So I'm definitely going to be posting some of the good pitches on there. Um, so we can hear the kids and see what they have to say. Cause some of the kids came up with some brilliant things. I had a kid come up with a insurance company. Another kid came up with, um, a basketball tool. It's like really cool. It's really creative. Actually a kid had me sign a non-competitive agreement. So he made me sign it cause he wanted to make sure I didn't steal his idea. So they're very awesome kids. I'm very excited for it. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, the Finance Miami is the, uh, the, is the yes. Instagram? Yes. So Instagram is at Finance Miami. And the website is the same thing, www.financemiami.com. And you can see everything we've done up to this day. Okay. All right. Awesome. So thank you so much. You did a great job. I'm impressed. Thank you so much <laughs> for doing a great job uh, with the team. And uh, everyone's going to be following your success at Columbia. All right? <laughs> yes. You got re- to represent. So I'm going to wear, an- I'm gonna wear my anatomy merch for sure. You got to. You got to. All right, Elijah. Have a great day, and thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. It was awesome. All right.